thank Songsters for their pre-meeting ministry this morning. It's good to welcome you all, whether you're watching online at some stage in the future, or whether you're here in person this morning. Good to see you all, and we hope you enjoy and benefit from your time of worship and fellowship with us here. Special mention to Anne-Marie today, it's her birthday, so uh, many happy returns Anne-Marie. What better way to spend it than with your friends here at the, at the court. Uh, a few weeks ago I met uh, Major David Evans, who's just about to retire. He particularly asked me to pass on his best wishes to those of you who remember him. He was actually a cadet here, on placement here, something like 40 years ago, so there's probably not too many of us who do, but certainly he thoroughly enjoyed his time here and uh, wanted to pass his best wishes on to all those who do remember him. The um, tea and coffee rotor uh, needs filling up. We're okay for this week, we're okay for next week. After that, there's quite a few blanks, so if you could help with that, that would be uh, uh, really appreciated. If you're not certain you can uh, uh, manage, so to speak, or know what to do, then please just have a word with me, and I'll more than willingly help you and point you in the right direction, so to speak. That's it, I think, for announcements, apart from saying that we meet again for worship next Sunday morning. Majors Andrew and Valerie will be leading our worship on that occasion, as indeed this morning. A number of our uh, folk away on holidays, you might imagine, and uh, uh, some uh, at uh, the music school as well, and so we'll be thinking about those during the course of the meeting, I'm, I'm sure, as well. Let's pray together. <coughs> Father God, we thank you that we're able to meet in this particular way this morning. We recognise that it's quite a relaxed time, just already a relaxed feel this morning as we've prepared for worship. We pray now, Lord, that we will relax in your presence and just really understand and uh, hear what you have to say to us through the worship this morning. As we offer our worship to you, we pray that it may be acceptable to you and we pray, Lord, that you'll bless us as we endeavour to, to, to do our part in worshipping, honouring and praising you. Speak to us through your words, speak to us through the musical contributions, everything that's done here this morning, Lord. And we just pray that it will bless us and bless those who watch uh, online in future hours and days. We pray especially for those who are not here, for whatever reason, Lord, whether they're on holiday, whether they're ill, whether they are <coughs> at music school or summer school, we just pray, Lord, your blessing upon them. And may they know in a sense that we're praying for them just now. And we just offer all these prayers in through the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Ian. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you here this morning. And uh, I know we're going to be blessed because God is all about blessing his people who come together for worship of him. Uh, and we pray that our worship will bring blessing to his heart this morning also. We're going to stand and sing our first song, Stand Up and Bless the Lord, ye people of his choice. Stand up and bless the Lord your God with heart and soul and voice. Yeah, let's stand and sing together. Thank you.
verse together before we sing the final verse. God is our strength and song, and his salvation ours. Then be his love in Christ proclaimed with all our ransom powers. Thank you. The last verse. So good morning, folks. As we um, almost settle ourselves down now to come into prayer, we're going to be using um, that lovely song, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful mind. In purer lives, thy service find. In deeper reverence, praise. And as we um, look through these verses and we think of situations which I'll prompt you to pray about during our time just now, just allow God to come to us in the stillness of these moments. Perhaps forgetting about all you've left behind, all perhaps you've had to face this past week, perhaps you're going to be facing in the days that lie ahead in this coming week as well. But in these moments, just allow God's Holy Spirit just to pour out into this place, into each of our lives, as we come into prayer just now. Let's sing through this song right now, please.
as we bow our heads just now. I wonder, Jonathan, if you could just play through the refrain quietly. And as we think of the words we've just sung about, you know, you think of that first verse, forgive our foolish ways. There may have been times this week, Lord, when we've said the wrong thing. We've done the wrong action because we've been foolish. And we've strayed away from what we should be as your people. So just now in these moments, Lord, we would ask for that forgiveness. And help us, Lord, not to be foolish again in the future. As we seek to be your disciples, your people here on earth. Think of that um, second verse, or third verse we sang, O Sabbath rest by Galilee. O Lord, we thank you for this Sabbath day, this chance to be here in this place for worship. Sometimes, Lord, we do take it for granted. But help us in these moments to just truly value being in your presence in worship this morning. As we're mindful of others around this world who don't have this same privilege that we have to be in worship like this this morning. So Lord, help us to value this Sabbath day and the rest which comes being in your presence. Think of that verse which says about take from our souls the stress, the strain. And Lord, we've mentioned at the beginning of our prayer time, there may be those times this week, even today, that we feel the stress and the strain of all that this world places upon us, all that this life places upon us. So Lord, lift us in these quiet moments. Lift those burdens from us, that stress and the strain which may be holding us back. And help us just to relax in the calmness of your presence right now. And then mindful of that final verse, which says, breathe through the eats of our desires. Lord, help those desires that we have to be God-honoring desires. As we want to be the people that just flow with the love that we have of you into the lives that we come into contact with. So Lord, we thank you for these precious moments. And we would ask that you'll take hold of all that's been prepared for this day. That our hearts will be open to your voice. Our eyes will see Jesus. And that we will leave this place knowing we've been in your presence. To continue on the journey that you have placed each of us upon. So Lord, we would ask all of these things this morning in and through the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. Now look forward to the message from the songsters, please.
say thank you to Liam and to the songsters for that choice. Jesus is all I need. He is my everything. A lovely testimony in song. Now we're all going to take part as we give in our offering um, and we'll pray God's blessing upon that. Lord, you are worthy, worthy of our praise this morning, worthy of our love, worthy of our gifts given to you just now. We ask your blessing upon those gifts and upon those that they will help. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, looking around, we haven't got many young people here this morning. We've got lots of tiny tots. Um, but I'm sure we've got lots of young at heart. Yes. Uh, so I'm hoping you'll all enjoy <laughs> what I've prepared for our young people. We're thinking this morning, again, of the fruit of the Spirit. And this week, the fruit of the Spirit is goodness. Goodness. Now, there are lots of different fruits. What's your favourite fruit? Anybody got a favourite fruit? Yes, Benjamin. Strawberries. strawberries. Oh, yes. We've got lots of strawberries at the moment, haven't we? They're all lovely and ripe and juicy. Very good. Anybody else got a favourite fruit? Yes? Strawberries as well. Oh, lots of strawberries like Caspian. Bananas. bananas. Yay. <laughs> yes, bananas. Anybody else? Peaches. Peaches. Very good. Fresh or tinned? Fresh. Cliff. Raspberries. Oh, very nice. Yes, Kelly. Grapes. Oh, yes, lovely. Yes, Heidi. Blackberries. Blackberries. Oh, very nice. Great. Well, I've got... Oh, sorry, Matthew. Orange. Oranges. Yes, orange. He has oranges after lunch every day. He has oranges after lunch every day. He really likes... He loves them, yes. Thank you for that information, Benjamin. <laughs> now, we're going to see a picture of two babies. Now, I want you to have a guess, children, 
and see if you can guess which fruit they've just tasted. Okay, here's, hopefully, hopefully here's a picture. There we go. Can you see it? Which fruit do you think those two, yes. Lemons. Yes, well done. Lemons, yes. Oh, have you ever eaten a raw lemon? Put your hand up if you have. You have. Is it Kendra? Yeah. You like the yummy sour lemon. Oh, goodness. Anybody else t tasted? Yes. Matthew, did you like it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great! <laughs> well, I don't like raw lemons, and they make me pull a face like the babies did. <laughs> you know? Ooh, sour. But you know, lemons might not be the most favourite fruit, even though you might like them, but they are very good for us. You know? They're full of vitamin C. They reduce the risk of heart problems, anemia, kidney stones, so lots of health issues can be helped. And they also help digestion. So when you eat your tea or your lunch or whatever you're eating, if you have some lemon juice, it can help with digestion. And uh, lemons grow on trees. So here's a picture of a lemon tree, hopefully. Yes, can you see? Have you ever seen a lemon tree? Anybody seen a lemon tree? Yes, yes, Stuart has. Yes, oh, a couple over here. Yes, very good. Now, here's another picture. This is another fruit tree. And Matthew, you'll really like this one because it's full of oranges. Yes. And we like oranges, don't we? Oranges are good and sweet, juicy fruits, very different to the lemon fruits. Benjamin. That's right, it's a good idea to peel the skin off. Yes, got to be very careful. And you've got to look out for the pips as well, haven't you, in oranges and lemons. Yeah, well they're good, sweet, juicy fruits, full of vitamin C again. Provides protein that helps our bodies to heal and boosts our immune system, which means it helps us to fight against germs. Yeah. Here's another tree. What's on this tree? Can you see? Yes, Benjamin? Apples. Did you see that, Caspian? Yeah? Apples. Lovely, juicy apples. Well, they too are good for us. They provide help against many health problems, including brain health. So they help your brains to eat apples. There you go, you're all gonna go out and get some apples now, aren't you? Yes, and they're very good in apple pies. Mm. And finally, another tree. What's growing on that tree? Bananas, Caspian's favourite fruit. Look at all those bananas just there on that tree. And isn't it amazing how they grow upwards like that? Well, they are a good fruit. It's good to eat bananas. And they also help us with our health. But we are warned not to eat too many bananas, okay? So don't eat like as many as that in one go. You know, be very careful that you don't eat too many all at once. Fruit treats, sorry, Benjamin. They grow in the jungle. Yes, lots of these fruits grow in very hot places, don't they? But you know what? We've got a great neighbour across from us, and he has three fruit trees. One's an apple tree, one's a pear tree, and one's a plum 
tree and they're all looking really good. They're coming to be bigger fruits and there's lots of fruits upon them. Well, fruit trees will first produce flowers. We often see the flowers first and they're beautiful to see. But we know that the flowers have to die in order for the fruit to have life and to grow. And the fruit needs the sunshine to really develop well and the rain uh, to sustain moisture in all that they need. God has provided us with some really good foods, great fruits that we can enjoy, and they help us to have healthy lives. But I'm reminded as I think of the fruit tree that if they don't bear the flowers, then the fruit won't come. And I'm reminded that unless we accept that Jesus died on the cross for us, then we can't know real life and life in all its fullness and bear good fruit. Now, we're not going to bear oranges and bananas, kids, but we hopefully will lead good lives that show God's love and his care to others. Well, thanks for joining in with me. I bet I've made you all hungry now, haven't I? And uh, wanting some fruit. It's a shame I didn't bring some if I'd have only thought. (laughs) But we're going to sing together, and we're going to sing. Let us sing of his love once again, of the love that can never decay, of the blood of the lamb who was slain, till we praise him again in that day. May we, as we live our lives, show God's goodness in and through all that we do. I'm going to invite you to stand, and let's sing together.
please be seated. Now, we're having our Bible reading from the Good News Version this morning, and uh, there's just a few verses, verses 33 to 35 of Matthew chapter 12. And as there's only a few verses, I'm going to invite all of us to read these words together. So let's share together. To have good fruit, you must have a healthy tree. If you have a poor tree, you will have bad fruit. A tree is known by the kind of fruit it bears. You snakes, how can you say good things when you are evil? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good person brings good things out of a treasure of good things. A bad person brings bad things out of a treasure of bad things. Yeah. We're going to look at those words in a little while. But first we're going to sing together. His provision. At the moment of my weakness... When my need for power is plain and my own strength is exhausted once again, then my Lord has made provision for the day of my despair and his precious Holy Spirit hears my prayer. Beautiful words. I invite you to remain seated as we sing.
God, in these moments, we thank you for your spirit moving amongst us. We thank you for the reminder of that prayer that we need to make every day. Holy Spirit, rest upon each one of us, I ask. As you've spoken to Richard this morning, I pray that your blessing will fall upon him. That as he leaves his burden with you just now, that you will take from him all that he struggles with and that is of concern to him just now. May he know your spirit at work in his life this morning. And for anyone else here bowed before you, Lord, that needs that extra special touch upon their lives just now, we ask that they would come to you, that they would pray to you, and that they would allow your spirit to touch their lives again just now. Thank you for this privilege, Lord, that is ours, to pray to you. Just in these moments, Lord, hear our prayers and answer them in your time and your way. For we ask this in your name. Amen. Is there someone else who will pray just now, please? again those lovely words from the chorus make it your prayer this morning holy spirit promised presence fall on me oh may that be so turn to the band for their message for us this morning. Thank you.
how could we not be blessed then if we were listening? Listening to that beautiful melody and that very simple prayer. Teach me how to love thee. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to serve thee better day by day. Thank you so much, band, for reminding us of that prayer. And we prayed it with you as you played. Now let's pray for God's word. Lord, you've blessed us already in so many different ways. But we ask for further blessing upon your word, that which you've shared with Andrew, for him to share with us. May we listen and hear your voice. And upon hearing your message intended for us as individuals, we ask that you would give us grace to act upon what we hear. We ask this in your name. Amen. Perhaps you've heard an exasperated parent tell his or her child, Oh, be good for goodness sake. Unfortunately, mums and dads' idea of goodness may be different from the child's idea of what is good. But Paul said, the fruit of the Spirit is goodness. And what does it mean for you and for me to have goodness, to be good? Ephesians and verse five and sorry, Ephesians five and verse nine says this for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness. And the King James Version of that says the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. See, the fruit is made up of goodness. Each of the nine expressions of the fruit of the Spirit are connected to each other. You can't have one without the others developing in you as well. When we started this series of the fruits of the Spirit, I emphasised that love is necessary for all the other fruits to flourish. So I believe that goodness is love extending. You know, goodness is love reaching out to others. And here's another way to think of it. Why does love extend or reach to others? Well, goodness is our motivation. Just look again at what Paul said. The fruit of the light, the fruit of the spirit, consists or is in all goodness. When the fruit of the Spirit is fully developed within our lives, then goodness is at the heart of everything that you and I do. Unless we let the fruit spoil and go bad, we will have no reason to show that fruit of the Spirit because goodness will no longer be there. I've already mentioned about our neighbour who has these various fruit trees. And even though the fruit grows after the, the flowers have gone, unless he picks those ripe fruits off the tree, they will fall and they will rot, or they will hang there and rot. In the same way, our goodness needs to flow through us, doesn't it? See, goodness is the motivation for everything that we do. Do you, do I desire the goodness to be the reason behind how we live our lives? You know, I want goodness to drive me, to motivate me, and I hope that's the same for each one of you this morning. Billy Graham, the American evangelist, once said, goodness is not made up of the outward things we do. Rather, goodness is the inward reality of who we are in Christ Jesus. Jesus teaches us what goodness really is. Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 18 says, As Jesus started on his way, 
A man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? But then Jesus answered, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. What Jesus shows to this man and what we learn about ourselves is that all too often we overestimate who we are and we underestimate who God is. See, Jesus tells this man if he will simply keep the commandments, then he would have eternal life. But this man responds like many of us would. I've kept all the commandments. I've done everything God requires of me. But Jesus simply replies, one thing you lack. In other words, you've missed it. If you think you can be good enough to satisfy God's requirements, if you think you can do enough good things to make God happy, then you have missed the most important point. The one can, no one can do anything apart from Jesus. See, the fruit of the Spirit is goodness, and goodness is not the fruit of the saints. See, you and I cannot produce goodness. We cannot develop the fruit apart from being connected through Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's Jesus and his spirit that is living in us. Christ in us can cause the likeness and the image of God to be evident and real within each one of our lives. So what does goodness look like? Well, goodness is love extended. Goodness is not the eternal things we do, but so the external things that we do, but it's the internal reality of who we are in Christ Jesus. Because goodness makes us godly. But what does goodness look like within this real world we live in? Can we recognize goodness in our lives and the people around us? Well, Jesus tells us, yes, you can. In the rather blunt reading that we shared from Matthew 12, and it's quite blunt in other versions rather than the good news that we shared this morning, but Jesus says that everything we do and say is an overflowing of what goes on within our hearts. What's inside determines what comes out through what we say and the actions that we do. We cannot be goodness if we say those wrong things. We cannot be goodness if we're not prepared to put love into action. Jesus said it is easy to tell the condition of a person's heart, whether it is good or bad as it is to tell the condition of the tree from its fruit. We find the same things in James chapter 3 and verses 11 to 12. We say this. Do clean and polluted water flow out of the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree produce olives? Can a grapevine produce figs? In the same way, a pool of salt water cannot produce fresh water. So goodness looks like the spirit residing within us and through us. Goodness simply looks like Jesus. The spirit makes us aware of our need for God. His work within us creates a new heart, a new nature, and we start to look at Jesus as the Holy Spirit chips away at us and remolds us into what we should be looking like. Because Jesus had a heart of a servant, didn't he? Now for me, that, that's what goodness looks like. Being a servant. Having a servant's heart. Being the one that doesn't think about pleasing themselves 
but always looks for ways to serve and help others. And God wants you to be a do-gooder, to be a servant. Now, goodness is made possible in our hearts as we accept the Lord Jesus fully. And it continues to grow as we develop that servant's heart. We have the choice as individuals to accept God's amazing grace, God's forgiveness and God's love. It is a choice. And to allow his Holy Spirit to reside in our lives for the fruit of the Spirit, love to take root, deep root. And for that developing fruit, the qualities, the characteristics, joy, peace, patience, kindness and goodness to be evident to those around us. This morning, as we consider and desire evidence of this beautiful fruit within each of our lives, may God do in us what is required to make this possible. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your word to each one of us this morning. As we continue to consider the fruit of your spirit, we pray that your love will be at the very center of each of our lives, deep rooted love. We ask and we desire that from your love will extend goodness and our likeness of you, evident to those around us in the world in which you have placed us. Help us to make goodness our motive for everything that we think and say and do. Help us to live out our lives to bring peace to others within this area, this community that we live and within our families that they can see Jesus through our lives. Lord, we ask all these things right now in and through the powerful name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. And in closing this morning, we're going to sing that founder song, O Boundless Salvation. Sing verses 1, 5, 6, and 7. And we'll stand and sing these verses straight through, please.
O boundless salvation, for you and for me. Hallelujah. Let's share this benediction. Let the majesty of the Father be the light by which you walk. The compassion of the Son be the love by which you walk. And the presence of the Spirit be the power by which you walk. Lord, with us now as we leave this place, that the gifts of your Holy Spirit will reign throughout our lives. We ask all these things now and in through the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. God bless you all.